Good evening. My name is Yusuf Alas and Chipsa, a licensed intermediary of Club Consult Africa. My consultancy was in charge of the transfer of Kwame Bonsu from Kumasa Santi Kotoko to Experience uh, last August 2019. This transfer for the past two, three days has generated a lot of controversies and uh, from the part of Club Consult Africa, I would like to clear the air uh, as to what happened, what really transpired from the beginning of the transfer till now. If I recall very well, or if we all recall, uh, as far back as uh, last August 2019, um, we presented Kwame Bonsu to Esperance through a partner of mine in, in Tunisia called Slim. We showed them his videos, they showed interest. Uh, the scouting department followed up to check up on one or two things concerning this incident that happened in Sweden. Uh, finally, we came to uh, an agreement. They made a proposal to protocol. I got in touch with protocol. I requested for a mandate, which they did. We agreed on a fee to be paid to me if the deal goes through. So, uh, we seek permission. They granted us the permission. I flew to Tunisia with Kwame Mosul. We went there right from the airport. Uh, Esperance took us straight to the hospital for Kwame to start his medicals. So we did the medicals. I think the first day we spent almost the whole day with the medicals. We couldn't finish. So the next morning we continued until the medicals was over. Then we went through the contract and then it was signed. Per the contract, um, Kotoko was entitled to $150,000 as a, a transfer fee. So Kotoko decided that uh, they have bad experience with North African clubs when it comes to payment. So they would rather prefer to have full payment before they release his ITC. Uh, which I communicated to Esperance, but they said no, that has not been the normal practice in football, which I agree, uh, most transfers uh, ITCs are sent before payment is done because most times <coughs> it's just a few occasions that you get full payment done at once. Most times the payments are done in installments, so usually you have to release the ITC before payment is done. So I try to convince Kotoko because as a representative of the player and looking at Kwame Bonsu's history, what happened to him in Sweden, what he went through, and then bring, me bringing him to Kotoko. For him to have this opportunity, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't like to disclose the details of his contract, but the contract was too good for us to lose it just because of uh, doubts about payment. So I told Kodoko that, okay, I can, um, you can hold me responsible if Esperance uh, refuses to pay. I will make sure that uh, whatever <coughs> it takes for me to get Esperance to do the payment, I will do it. So we, we signed an undertaking. They asked me to sign and take it, which I did, and then they released Kwame Bonsu to, to Esperance. So after a couple of months, the payment was not coming through. Uh, I was in touch with Esperance. They were telling me oh, they will pay. They sold uh, from Kong to uh, an Arabian club, and therefore they were waiting for his payment. As soon as they get a payment, they will pay us at the I reported back to Kotoko. So it got to a point that they said, you signed an undertaking, that you make sure we get our money. So we are holding you responsible. I accepted. I said, okay. If that is the case, the best way to deal with these North African clubs is to is to take them through litigation. So I have a, a legal person, a, a counsel that I work with when it comes to uh, football. He's been with me everywhere I sign contracts. He's based in Portugal. So I got in touch with him, told him the story, sent him copies of the contract signed. So after studying the contract, he said, okay, uh, it's a good case. Esperance cannot uh, uh, say they will not pay the money. So all he will need is for Kotoko to give him a mandate, for Kotoko to authorize him, because uh, if the case should proceed to cast, the contract is going to be used as an exhibit. And therefore, since it is Kotoko who signed the contract, they have to give him the mandate. So I came back to Kotoko and told him that look, the lawyer needs a mandate in order to start action on this way. Initially, they said I should mandate the lawyer because I have signed an article. But I told him it doesn't, it's not going to work because when it goes to cast, I, my name is not in the contract. The contract is between Kotoko and Esperanza. So therefore, Kotoko should mandate the agent with the agreed. So I made the, 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 the lawyer to come down to Ghana 
just to meet Kotoko in person so they will get to see each other and then we take it from there. When he arrived, Kotoko wanted him to come to Accra and to Kumasi, but he said unfortunately he cannot come to Kumasi. He wants to stay in Accra and transact everything because he has just two days to go back to Portugal. So on the last day before his departure, uh, Nana Kwame Dankwa and uh, Safo Duku were able to get him the mandate. So Nana Kwame Dankwa came to the airport, met him there, and then gave him the, the authorization. So as soon as he went back to Portugal, he, he set the ball rolling, he wrote to experience, uh, demanding payment for Kota. So upon receipt of the letter from the lawyer, Esperance wrote to Kotoko for the account details so that they will effect payment. When Kotoko received the email from, from Experience, they then wrote to, to the agent in, uh, in Portugal. Uh, but before that, after the authorization, um, we discussed about the legal fees, yeah. how much was involved. The lawyer said 10%, which we pleaded with him. We came, we ended up with 7.5%. So Kotoko said, uh, I should pay because I have signed an undertaking. But I told them, look, it is true I have signed an undertaking. I accept responsibility for that. But that doesn't mean that they should leave everything on my shoulders. I mean, I'm, I'm trying my possible best to help this thing, to solve this issue. So if that is the case, okay, let's split the payment. We, we share. 50-50 uh, to pay the, the legal fees. They agreed, but they told me they will have to report to executive chairman for his confirmation before. So after a couple of days, they came back to me and said that um, they are not going to, to pay part of the legal fees. So it's entirely up to me since I have signed an undertaking. I actually wanted to get this off my, my back. I really want to solve this issue. So I accepted. I went back to the lawyer and told him, look, Pedro, uh, that is the lawyer's name. His name is Pedro. Kotoko uh, is not paying the legal fees. They've left it up to me. I have accepted responsibility because I have signed an undertaking. So please, uh, let me just pay five percent for you to proceed. He said, "Okay, you see, no problem." He agreed, and therefore he said, "But before he proceeds with the case, Kotoko should write back to him, authorizing him to go ahead with the case because they've already sent him a mail to put a stop to the authorization they sent to him." So until Kotoko sends him another mail asking him to go further or to continue with the case, he can never go ahead with the case because uh, they authorized it and they stopped him. So that should be the process. I came back to Kotoko, I made a new commands, I told him that the lawyer was to proceed with the case, but until you send him another mail asking him to go further, he's not going to do anything. They said, no, I should tell him to go ahead. I said, it's not going to work because you guys sent him a mail, official mail, stopping him. So you have to send him another mail to ask him to go ahead with the case. You can even state in the mail that Kotoko is not responsible for his fees. I will be responsible. I will be liable to pay his fees. Just send him the mail so that he could go ahead. They promised that they were, they were going to send the mail, but they never did. So uh, after about, let's say, a couple of weeks, Koka, uh, he called me and said they have decided to to handle the case to Ashwat Etoko because um, he has never handled such case for them when they had an issue with CX Tassian. I told Koka to inform me as soon as you get to know. And then Akute told me that Ashwat is charging 10%. So honestly, I told him I'm not going to accept 10% because I was able to get paid from the Portuguese lawyer to accept 5%. So if they want Ashford to take on the case, I have no problem with that. But I am going to pay only 5%. I will not pay more than the charge that uh, the Portuguese lawyer is asking me to pay. So well, Ashford can go ahead with the case, but then I will pay only 5% of his fees. They will have to sort out the rest. I didn't hear from them again. I could have told me he was going to report back to Coca and to the executive chairman. And whatever it is, they'll get back to me. They never got back to me again. Until recently, these issues came up that uh, Kotoko wants me to pay the hundred and fifty thousand dollars transfer fee because I have signed and not taken. Apparently, Esperance was reluctant to pay the fee because when they asked their accounts department to pay Kotoko, um, one of the accounts department members said they had a, they had an issue with Kotoko as far back as 2015. Uh, the that was a close Clote uh, transfer saga. Mano Clote was a player of experience. He went on loan to, to Arab Gulf 
And then when he returned, he came straight to Ghana, signed for Santi Kotoko, claiming he's a free player. So the document that he showed to Kotoko was in, was in French. And I don't know what happened. I don't know if they translated it or they read it well. They fed the system with that paper and registered uh, quality. So Esperance took the issue out to CAS and they won. CAS passed judgment and they won. And Kotoko was held to join the Arabo because they didn't do due diligence before they signed Kolote. So you know, and when we are held joint liable in such cases, CAS or FIFA doesn't really care who pays the money. Either Kolote pays the whole amount, or Kolote together with us, Kotoko pays the whole amount, or Kotoko pays a loan. So the judgment was there. Kotoko had the opportunity to appeal. I don't know if they did or they did late, because when I spoke to the Asafo who, who was then the, the, the legal person, when the, the transfer took place, I mean, when Bosu's transfer took place, he said um, they did the appeal at that time, but they did the appeal was late, so it, 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 it wasn't possible. It didn't get nowhere. So this was the main reason why uh, Esperance was reluctant to pay the money. They bring you to Kotoko telling them that you owe us hundred and eighty thousand dollars, and therefore it's either you pay us that money and then we pay you uh, Bosu's money. Or we strike the difference and then you pay us 30,000. But then Kotoko was not ready. They kept insisting that since I have signed and I'm taking, I have to pay the money or get their money for them. Um, I mean, it, it was not making sense for me, sorry for my word. But then uh, I go back to restaurants. The vice president, Walid, is a very good friend. I said, Walid, why are you doing this to me? He said, you see, It is not in his powers. The board have decided that it's either Kotoko pays the 180,000. And then as far as space for the transfer of, of Bonsu, or then or they, they strike the difference and Kotoko must balance them. So they wrote FIFA that look, we had this case in 2015, judgment was passed in our favor, but Kotoko failed to pay the money. So FIFA wrote back to Kotoko instructing them to pay the money or the face punishment, that is uh, the motion. And the deadline for the payment was yesterday, the 19th of, uh, of March. So as we speak now, um, I don't know if Kotoko really responded to, to that letter, if they've been able to sort things out with Esperance. I spoke yesterday, last night, with the Vice President of Esperance, but he couldn't give me much details. All he told me was uh, FIFA has written to Kotoko for them to, to pay the money. So, it is not true that I am preventing Esperance to pay uh, Bosu's transfer, or I should be liable for the payment of Bosu's transfer. In natural sense, indirectly, Esperance is paying Bosu's transfer. The only difference is that it's either Kotoko pays the 180,000 and then Esperance pays the 150, or they strike the difference. In either way, the transfer fee of Bosu is being paid by Esperance. So the rumors going out that uh, I have taken Bosu away to Esperance and Kotoko is losing, they are not getting their money. It's, it's not true. I really feel sorry, I sympathize with Kotoko in this situation. It's, it's very unfortunate. But personally, I wasn't also aware about Kotoko's issue. If they had told me that there was an issue like that, I would never have signed the undertaking. I signed the undertaking in the interest of my player and in the interest of Kotoko. Because I knew the legal means to force Esperance to pay the money if they had failed or they have refused to pay. That is why I was so confident of myself to sign that undertaking with Kotoko before the transfer went through. So um, this is the whole issue, Sadiq. Like, uh, I have not done anything wrong. I really feel sorry for, for the club for this situation. But please, people should not blame me. I have not done anything wrong. I did the best for my player and the best for Kotoko. At least, I didn't know there was a debt of 180,000 that Kotoko was supposed to settle with, with Esperance. And that is why all this issue is up. There has been a, a lot of rumors and stories that I personally have benefited from this transfer. Some are even saying that uh, Esperance have uh, they've paid a lot of money to me uh, as agency fee and because of that I'm not doing any effort to get Kotoko to get their money. These are all false. I have not benefited one euro or one dollar from this transfer. I have not taken any commission from Asante Kotoko or from Experience. 
nothing, no money at all. Even when I got quite a bunch of another place to go to work, I never got a penny, a CD. I sympathize with the club. I do everything for the club because it's, it's a club that I love and I feel like giving back to the club. And therefore, people shouldn't think that uh, I'm selfish or I'm thinking about myself. They can make reference and ask uh, the, the current management if I have ever taken a penny from them for all the services that I have rendered to them. I have not taken nothing. Even though I'm entitled to 20% of the transfer fee, I have not taken nothing from a centre.